Okay, so we'll take a look at it, just kind of stepping through it. Um, if you wrote kind of those inequalities about environmental lapse rate to get those three different types of um, atmosphere, the first one was a question about that. So, of course, the ELR for a 7, it's between the 5 or 6 and 10. So, actually, that's conditionally stable. So, the best answer there is A for number 1. Question number 2, I was after reflected. So reflected light allows you to see yourself in the mirror. Question number three was one of the different ways um, that we describe humidity, and that's actually the mixing ratio for number three. Um, question number four. Question number four was one of the two that whatever you put, I counted it right. Because I was doing the answer key, and I'm like, I don't know. They all sound pretty right to me. <laughs> So actually, um, according to your textbook, it, E is the right answer. So relative humidity indicates the nearness of saturation to um, the nearness of sat the nearness that the air is saturated. The nearness the air is to being saturated. See, it's even hard to say. So question number five: uh, the moist adiabatic rate is different from the so the WAR is different from the DAR because of um, B latent heat released. Uh, latent heat of condensation. Question number six, uh, the best answer is B. Um, if the environmental lapse rate is less than your WAR, then you have an absolutely stable environment. Um, question number seven, and I will get, I, I meant to bring a spare one. If you don't, if you ever don't take a test, or if you take a test and aren't here to pick it up, then I have them in my office. Um, question number seven, um, the Earth's atmosphere is able to refract um, light rays, and that's because of the differences in density. Acting as different mediums, so D is the best answer for seven. Is there a homework question? Yeah, some of these are definitely very similar to homework questions. I was after advection fog as warm, moist air moves um, horizontally or moves over a cold surface. The A is the best answer there. I was after white light E for number nine. Basically, um, the sun sends us um, this color of light. Um, question number 10, which is a component of, has all the components of colors in, in white light. Question number 10, um, the difference between liquid uh, droplets and ice crystals, um, as they both fall through those, um, the super cool or uh, water vapor, is the fact that um, your ice crystal will deposit or grow more quickly. And kind of, that's the Bergeron process. That was kind of a nitpicky one. So A is the best answer there. 11, uh, lenticular, cl lenticular clouds are associated with mountains. D is the best answer for 11. For number 12, which of these um, cause a rainbow? So the best answer there was in this correct order, light is refracted and then it's reflected off of the back of the rain droplet. Um, so A is the best answer for 12. For 13, again with the rainbow, you should have, the observer should have his back to the sun and face the rain that's creating the rainbows. So A is the best answer for 13. Question 14, I was after velocity as changing when light is refracted or bends. Um, question 15, clouds, uh, clouds and precipitation form primarily due to A, uh, excuse me, C for 15, the air being cooled as it rises. Question number 16, those, um, we did the sling psychrometers in here. That's what question 16 is about. So the wet bulb and dry bulb are parts of a sling psychrometer, 16. Um, question 17, the law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And 18 was another one that I tried to hand correct, and if you missed it, go ahead and give it to you. Because what I really should have said, you observe a cloud, you observe a middle cloud, okay, instead of giving it the elevation. But some of you got that right, so the answer is, is alto. So, so question 19. Uh, during the process of adiabatic cooling, uh, the temperature gets, it gets cooler because um, D, it's expanding. It's the best answer. Question 20. Orographic lifting is when a parcel of air rises up and over a mountain. So D is the best answer for 20. 21, hail is associated with cumulonimbus clouds, A for 21. 22, uh, when uh, in a warm cloud, um, the growth of the water droplet is called um, A, collision coalescence is the best term there. Um, for 23, um, as the temperature is cooled, to the dew point temperature, um, A, condensation is most likely to occur for 23. 
24, um, the mare's tails are the, those cirrus clouds E. 25, um, they've toyed around with um, introducing silver iodide into the atmosphere. That was kind of like the crop duster sort of thing as part of C cloud seeding. Question 26, clouds are classified and named according to how tall, how their elevation or altitude. The other criteria is what we call their form or appearance. That's the flat or fluffy. So D is the best answer for 26. 27, um, supercooled water is E, still liquid at temperatures cooler than zero Celsius. Question 28, which of these is correct? It's correct D to say that low clouds are stratus. An example of a low cloud is a stratus cloud. Question 29, the adiabatic process um, is one that E, there's no exchange between the, in our case, parcel of air and the surrounding. It's the best answer for 29. Um, 30, the stability of, an, of a, a layer of air refers to its B tendency to um, either rise or um, stay where it is or sink, I guess. Um, question 31, a superior mirage will appear above the um, object or horizon, and an inferior mirage will pull up here below the horizon. Um, so A is the best answer for 31. 32 was like one of your homework questions. Um, assuming uh, throughout the course of the day that the water vapor remains constant, um, how does the relative humidity at 2 p.m. compare to the 1 and the morning? Actually, the relative humidity at 2 p.m. is lower. I thought it was 5 p.m. I read that. Oh. <laughs> 5 p.m. to 5 a.m., yeah. I could see that. So C is the best answer there. Question 33, the capacity of um, air to hold water vapor um, B will increase. Warm air holds more water vapor with increasing temperature. Question 34, um, the phenomenon that results from the speed of light changing as it passes through different medium or different substance we call E, generally refraction. And the last multiple choice question uh, the nimbo stratus are the type of clouds that listed there are most likely to produ produce rain. They don't have um, cumulonimbus there, so nimbo stratus. So on to the um, vocab. So in some of these cases, you can actually earn one of two points. So um, the first one I was after environmental lapse rate is what a balloon measures as it goes up. You could either do ELR or, or print out environmental lapse rate. The second one, 37 here, I was after Mirage, is just in general that, um, that object that's uh, a second image, either above or below the real object. Um, for 38, I was after Cloud Condensation Nuclei, or CCN, as those little pieces of dirt that kind of get um, water vapor to go ahead and liquefy. Question 39, I was after Internal Reflections, that's the little girl uh, in the swimming pool sort of thing. Um, question 40, I was after dry adiabatic rate, how um, a chunk of air cools as it rises. Um, for 41, I was after hydrogen bonds as basically when water vapor does go ahead and go from a vapor or gas to a liquid, that's the, little, that's the bonds that connect the water molecules. Um, for 42, I was after radiation fog as the get up in the morning and you have fog sort of thing. because They call it radiation fog because the Earth has radiated most of its energy away. Um, question 43, I was after Virga as a cloud uh, tries to drop its rain and it drops from the cloud but it evaporates before it hits the ground, Virga. And then I was after green flash for the last one um, because of um, the sun's light is refracted. Green, as it turns out, is the last color to set. And so actually, if it's a setting sun or a rising sun, that's the little tippy sliver of um, kind of colorful blip we talked about in, in lecture. So for 45, actually, if you put much of anything for question number 45, these are all worth three points now. I, I gave you sometimes full credit. 45 is not going to be on your final exam, nor is question number four and the other one that I didn't like. So those won't be on your final exam. Remember that your final exam will be questions lifted up off and put on a final. Um, now, we will have like a review session for your final before your final exam. And if you choose to go to that optional review session, I bring along your, your answer keys and we'll just kind of look through them. So... 
So, um, but basically, it gives the fact that um, to get condensation to happen, you have to lift um, uh, one chunk of air up to 2,000 meters, and you have to lift another chunk of air up to 4,000 meters. And I told you you guys weren't going to have to do this, like the whole apply the cooling rate. But if you apply the cooling rate, you can see that at 2,000 meters, it's cooled 20, de see, uh, yeah, 20 degrees from 35 to 15 degrees Celsius. And at 4,000 meters, it's cooled four sets of 10, or 40 degrees. Okay, so actually it's a negative five. So what I wanted you to do is to go ahead and then compare what does that say about the dew point temperature of those two parcels of air. And the dew point temperature of B is a lot colder, so actually that means it's less humid. So I know. There's a lot in that one. That one won't be on your final either. And the next one might. Um, 46, that was a homework question, and it was like, um, if, it's, if you have clouds at night, uh, why might you not get this radiation fog? And the answer is because, you, and I love what you guys wrote, if you have clouds, it's, it's not going to cool down to the dew point temperature. Um, for 47, I know it looks kind of messy here in my answer key, but there are the 10 different cloud types and kind of what you needed to put. You guys did well on that. Usually kind of put its appearance, is it flat or fluffy, and its general elevation. Um, for the next one, um, you needed to uh, kind of tell me one way, either in words or in a picture, um, what sort of kind of setup do we have if we get rain, or what kind of setup do we have for freezing rain. And I kind of wrote, um, this is the normal rain okay, over here on the left, and then this right here is the freezing rain, or this right here is the temperature inversion. But some of you guys did a great job other ways of just kind of describing what happens. Um, so for 49, that was another homework question, where why do, can't you have virga and fog coexist? And the answer, of course, is virga needs dry air and fog needs moist air. So. Um, number 50, the four lifting mechanisms. We have um, the mountain lifting, orographic lifting, the frontal lifting, fronts, um, convergence that um, is basically air is going to meet up at a certain point. We'll be talking more about this actually this week, convergence. Um, and it goes up as it meets um, localized convective lifting. A spot kind of got warmer than its surrounding and it became buoyant and rise. So down here for 51, um, this is the, now your textbook kind of talks about um, how I think it says coronas could exist, could be created by both um, liquid water droplets in a cloud and also ice crystals. But um, I, knew, I learned it as um, cloud droplets. Of course, um, ice crystals create sun dogs and halos, and rainbows are created by rain droplets. So 